Okay, so hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the All About Ability podcast. Today we have quite the character, you could say. <laughs> he's, he's been about the place, he's been on plenty of podcasts recently and uh, we've been wanting him, up, wanting him on for a while, Kaz Milligan. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. So, Kaz, first of all, how are we? All good, man. Blessed. <laughs> you, I watched your documentary last night. Mm, thank you. Now, I will say that the production of it all for, for, for something that you're putting together yourself for a few other people was very well done. You know, like Appreciate it. The whole, the whole kind of way you went about it was good. Mm. But there were some things, obviously, you probably, at this point, you may get, you must have against like, I talked about this. Like. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the thing is, if it's inspiring people and it's reaching new eyes and motivation, one more person at least, then I'm cool to talk about it forever. So it's, that seems to be a common thread of what you've been saying recently about inspiring people and motivating yeah. people. Mm. Why do you want to do that? What is it, you know, because obviously in the documentary you talk about how you went through hard times and mm. you want to help people through these things, but you, one of the things you kind of referenced in that was the fact that you've you've not necessarily been taken seriously mm. up until this point. Yeah. And you, you did go into detail about how that was kind of, the point of that was to... Um, engage people and sort of play the haters if you like yeah no exactly like the main thing is like i've got a few missions in life one is to make the younger me happy like the, he had dreams i'm chasing them now and the other one is to inspire and motivate everybody because especially this day and age there's so many uh negative people and bad influences and you could go online and your whole thought system and mindset can be flipped uh with that with just watching bullshit on social media. Um, so I want to just make sure that people believe in themselves, try and inspire people, motivate people, like no matter where you've come from or whatever, if you've got dreams, you can go and achieve them. You could make shit happen. Everything's possible. So as long as I just continue doing that, like even if it's just on the side or whatever, but if my words inspire one person, it's a job well done. Well, I can't disagree with that. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a strong message. This end, I mean, when you talk about these, the the sort of haters and things like that, why do you think, why do you think you get so much hate? Do you, do you feel like, because you spoke about how in, in, in school and stuff you felt misunderstood by teachers and things like that, mm -hmm. do you feel like there's people out there that just don't quite understand where you're coming from? Um, I don't know. I think a lot of hate comes from people that are maybe down within their own life because maybe they're no like reaching the things that are going to fulfill them truly they then take it out on other people that are chasing dreams or whatever people just like to hate on people thriving and um becoming successful almost uh, if people see people happy they like to hate on that uh, and people will just hate on me for example for just bullshit reasons let's be honest it's either my accent or because i'm doing good for myself whatever that may be um and again i'll just manipulate them and play them at their own game man just make sure that they are giving me the engagement i need or want and uh, i'll make them give me free publicity every day and, I, and it works so but the thing is like me do you know what i mean promoting or producing and putting out this more serious content percentage of the haters always convert always you cannot hate on somebody for a long period of time when they're genuinely a nice human being like if somebody comes across me because of a 20 second video on tiktok and they judge me purely from that i get it you might know this you might not like um that character that was portrayed in that video that's cool but if you go down and do your research and watch hours upon hours of me or even if you go watch and what if you watch the right videos or watch the right podcasts that i'm on you're not going to dislike me you will convert and be a fan yeah i mean i think that with everything you're going to have some people that hate on you and mm. i think if you're doing you're doing something right if everybody either hates you or loves you yeah it's usually a good thing because it's, mm. it's that middle part that you don't want you know no exactly and the thing is like somebody said this to me recently you might have a day where they love you and you might have a day where they hate you. We get po we get paid both days. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to get paid both days. Hate me, love me, cool. I'm going to continue what I do. I'm going to continue my mission. I'm going to continue 
doing everything with good intentions and uh, nobody's going to stop me. See, when you say you get paid both days, like, how did you actually make money through doing this? Like, what is what is the... Uh, Lagan Goods is a breadwinner. So that's my business, my clothing brand, Lagan Goods. And um, whether that's sponsors or collaborations or even nightclub appearances, uh, there's unlimited ways to make money these days. I've said it on my GQ interview, I just uploaded it on my YouTube channel. If you've got one of these, if you're privileged and blessed enough to have a mobile phone and have social media, you could make money. You just need to think outside the box, maybe get outside your comfort zone and just go for it. You can make money. Well, you know, you definitely have that entrepreneurial mindset, which, mm -hmm. is, which is admirable. And w one of the things you can imagine that was how, you know, when it comes to the people that kind of engage in the, the hair side, just, you're able to sort of manipulate them and get them to tune into the things you want to do. But then how do you, so obviously, you're on a point now where you, you want to be taken more seriously and, yeah. and you want people to see you in a different light. Mm -hmm. But how do they, how do you differentiate? Like if somebody's actually tuning in to support you and, and help you and, and, and feels positive about your content, how do they differentiate the cars that's manipulating the haters or actually try to engage them? Do you know what I mean? In the sense of like, if I, <laughs> like, at this point, you, you've openly said that you've done that like mm -hmm. with the whole uh, kind of the, the sort of fake crying thing and stuff yeah. like that, which is, look, I understand where you're coming from, mm -hmm. but how do people know you, what you're saying now is real? I think it comes down to common sense. Like the haters, deep down, they know the person that they hate is a low-key character. They know it's satire, but they just... Most of my haters aren't actually true haters. They're commenting just for to get likes on their comment. They just want to tap in with the banner. But if you truly hate me, you've oh, you've no common sense. I'm going to be totally honest. I'm, I know not everybody's going to like me, right? But I, I've said this before. I've not done anything negative on, on the internet, ever. The only things I put out is positive, inspired, motivational, business, whatever it is. I've never done a negative thing on the internet. So if you dislike me or you hate me, is your problem to then like divide the serious me and the satire where I'm winding people up it takes common sense whether if you want to know when I'm being serious and when I'm winding up the haters take a step back and just watch it you're going to uh, do you know what I mean it, it takes a few brain cells to realise when I'm trolling and when I'm not really in my opinion anyway I don't know no I, I mean I really like that answer because it's honest in the sense of like there's a lot of influence out there, out there that would say, you know, it, it's all, the fact you're admitting it's satire and it's mm. part of a kind of, it's not necessarily the real you, mm. is, is sort of what I was looking for there yeah. in the sense that I think a lot of people are, that try and treat the audience like they're dumb, you know, and what you're doing there is, is you're res respecting the fact that people that tune in and actually appreciate you for who you are, mm. know what's real and what's not. Yeah, and the thing is, it's like, the certain, like a certain character that you see on TikTok, like me trolling and whatever, is not necessarily a fake me. It's just an over-exaggerated character, like a side of me, if that makes sense. And it's it's just fun, bro. Like it, people deep internet far too much, especially the haters, right? They're the first ones to say, um, like, oh, influencers, oh, you care too much, blah, blah, blah. But as soon as we don't care, then they get on at us for no working as hard or whatever it may be, do you know what I mean? So the internet, listen, when you see me trolling, I'm having fun. It's no that deep, do you know what I mean? And the haters need to realise that. Like, I, I want to have fun as well. Like, if I've no got that side of me and I'm always just dropping gems and being motivational, inspirational, business, 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 even I get bored. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I want to have a bit of fun as well. I want to go on and maybe wind some people up and have a laugh and that's my way of doing that as well no i, I like that fair play yeah it's, it's a good way of thinking about mm. it but part of the documentary when you're talking it talking in that you've you went in this sort of very deep side of it of your mental health struggles yeah and and how you kind of dealt with that and how that felt at the time mm. now to me like obviously you've you had you were talking about how you had this sort of moment you had this sort of you know for lack of a bit, we're putting a religious moment where, mm. you, where, where you ask God to help you and, yeah. and, and the next day you felt that 1% better and mm -hmm. pushed on. So from that point to now, I guess my question is, do you, do, you, do you ever actually feel 
like the hate or the comments get to you in any sort of way in the sense of like when you're when you because m- mental health is a constant thing it's the same mm-hmm. as physical health you're, mm-hmm. you're dealing with it every day yeah so obviously you've got a really strong mindset and thick skin mm-hmm. but did that after that event did that take time for that to develop or was it just did it feel like an instant thing no the hate and stuff that's never really got to me to be honest right? because like before this is a bit of advice for anybody that's what I like getting into social media and the internet. You need to understand where hate comes from first before you dive into it. And then you understand it and feel empathy for the hater. Now, so w- what I'm basically saying is when people showcase hate publicly, so in this instant, m- to me, if somebody shows hate and comments a bunch of hate, I know that they're hurt. Do you know what I mean? I, I look, he feel bad for them. Do you understand? So I'm not going to take offence and I'm not going to be hurt because you're projecting your hurt and you're doing it in such a violent way online. Do you understand? So it's never going to get to me, bro. I've never really, it's never really got me down, to be honest. And a lot, I'm going to be honest, a lot of my hate comments are people just trying to be funny. Like I laugh along with them. Like I'm reading my comments, pissing myself at night. Like I think it's funny half of them. Obviously there is some people that I truly hate uh, some of my content but again that's just coming for like they've got their own issues they've got their own problems and they're projecting that on on the internet if somebody i always say this if somebody's truly happy in life and i mean happiness is key right so if somebody's truly happy they're not on their phone dropping hate comments if they see a piece of content that they dislike and they're not a fan of if you're truly happy in your life you're not going to it's not going to anger you you're not going to feel the need to drop a a hate comment. You're going. This is what a happy guy or a happy female does when they see someone they dislike. They watch it. They watch it. Like mm, that's not for me. But fair play. I scroll past it. That's what a happy human being does on social media. Now a guy or a female that hate like they're truly got issues and they're gone through something in their life and they've got so much hatred within them. That's when they open their phone constantly frowning. Oh, this guy. That that way. Blah blah blah. blah. And do you know what I mean? I just feel bad for them. No, I mean, I can't argue with that. I think that, that when you're talking about people that comment and things just to get likes and the reaction, yeah. it's very, it's, it's something that's quite common in Scotland, I feel like, mm. especially because yeah. it, it's all about <clears throat> the kind of, that sort of, I guess, slagging off culture of like, if somebody's, especially when somebody's doing well and you're Scottish, it's yeah. like, we can't, we can't have this person doing too well, you know? No, 100%, bro. And I want to tap into that actually, because I've never really spoke about this in the podcast that I've been on. Well, so, that's, that's <laughs> uh, so uh, you were saying like the Scottish culture, like no wanting anybody to go too far into success. Like I experienced a time, 2021, end of 2021, start of 2022, I was like the most spoken about individual in the country. Fact. Like I had proper like the whole chocolate shit that just took me to a whole never, another level. But me experiencing being at the top of Scotland, being the king of Scotland, it still wasn't enough. It brought me some opportunities. I made enough money to get by and progress and put money in the business, blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't enough opportunities and money coming into where I'm like retiring my mum and dad. Do you understand? So I'm like, right, I've experienced this. Obviously, from my experience, being the most spoken about in Scotland is not enough. I need to surpass that. So that's why I'm flying over to Belfast, jump one podcast there, Birmingham, Worcester podcast there. Uh, I'm in London in two weeks time. I've got a, a bunch of stuff getting booked there by a PR guy that, I've, that I know is trying to get my name down there. And I want to just try and expand much more than just Scotland. Hopefully uh, it will be UK. And then after that, I'm fucking global. Whether that takes 5, 10, 15, 25, 30 years, then so be it. Uh, that's another thing as well. A lot of haters expect us to be a superstar within two years. And if we're no, we're failures. Do you know what I mean? People are like, oh, guys, you've been, uh, your name's been up for two years. Why are you no here yet? Why are you no? I'm like, bro, it's been two years. I've got another 60 ahead of me. Give me time. Do you know what I mean? If it takes 10, 20, another few decades, let it be. It's a, it's a really healthy perspective that I feel like mm. because we're all kind of chasing that instinct, <clears throat> that instant gratification yeah. um, of success and everything based off what you're doing right now, Val, mm. like the long term yeah. 
the long term goal. But it's really interesting you say that because you know recently for me I've had this thing where I, I used to be one of those guys that would set like really long term goals in my head. I'd go mm. right, I want to be here at this time, or and now I've kind of focused on what I'm doing today because yeah, none of your goals that you have are going to happen if you're not making the most of what you're doing today. Yeah, facts. So with that in mind, what, what does your daily routine look like in terms of progressing towards those goals? Pardon me. Uh, daily routine it changes every day, to be honest, bro. Um, I could be heavy focused on the gun one day where I'm designing and phoning up manufacturers and tapping in with graphic designers and all of this stuff. And then the next day I could be filming content with my missus. I've got, I've just uh, got together with Gigi for like two months now. So it could totally, thank you bro. I could totally change. I could be chilling, just thinking of TikTok ideas to wind everybody up, right? Cool, I've winded everybody up. How can I then direct them to the monetization and start making money, blah, blah. So every day is totally different. I've not got a daily routine really. I'm going to be honest. Well, that's really interesting, but like, so everything's kind of, for lack of a better word, like chaotic in the sense of ever changing. Mm -hmm. But do you have anything in particular that you do for yourself and your own personal development from this, from the sense of like keeping your mind right, you know, maybe working out, things like that? Do you, do you have things for yourself that kind of keep you grounded and not um, deal with these different areas? I try every so often, like, I'll need to sort of like bring myself back, like, right, remember, this is the mission. This is what we want. And when I want to bring myself back every so often, whether that's watching a certain movie that inspires me, uh, uh, maybe an entrepreneurial movie or whatever that is, that will then motivate me. And then once that's done, I'll be like, right, remember, this is the mission. Even coming on podcasts, um, to me, is almost like therapy. I can speak about certain things. We can have a great conversation about success or, or like what's going to benefit us how to improve us as people and elevate our mindset and stuff like that. So I feel like that helps as well. And like coming on these podcasts, I've noticed doing 20 podcasts the past six weeks or so, I'm already slowly improving my speech. So whether that's, I'll still have mistakes when I'm like, um, like saying, um, I've noticed, right. I want to try and improve that. And I'll still do it sometimes. Of course I will until maybe a few years down the line, but I've noticed that the past six weeks, I've noticed them um, taking pauses just to reassess rather than M's and do you know what I mean? Improving my wordplay and how I'm saying certain stuff and stuff like that. I'm still no perfect. I know that. Like I'm still no great at it, but going on all these podcasts, it's slowly and little by little improving and just stuff like that, just to improve certain aspects of me. Um, just, I am, I've just done it there. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's helping me and it keeps me focused and just seeing slight improvements keeps me happy, to be honest. For sure. That's, that was so way we listened to that because my, the first podcast, we've got, we've done 80 of these now. Mm -hmm. And the first podcast that I've done, uh, <laughs> there was a lot of M's. Aye. We had to, I had to sit and edit out this before I had the Magic Man Paul, but mm. I had to sit and edit out all these wee bits and that. Yep. And, like it made it watchable, but it's 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 the same with it. And like constant repetition is going to make you better. Yeah. But it made me think like when I, for example, when I first started doing this, I was very uncomfortable like being in front of a camera talking in the microphone. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've always felt naturally comfortable with? Yes and no. So I remember I started trying to be like an influencer. I'm no like I wouldn't class myself as an influencer now, right? But when I first started, I was. Not to be big headed, but I was doing it before everybody else. It was like seven years ago, six, seven years ago I tried. And then I remember all the, the big time people started talking on their story on Instagram. And I was like, I know I need to do that um, to keep up with them and to separate myself from the people that's not doing it. So that's when talking to stories first started becoming a thing. And this was, again, six years ago or something. Uh, and I felt so, no necessarily awkward because I know it needed to be done. But looking back at those videos, it, it was so forced. It was like, oh, bah, 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 bah. do you know what I mean? It just was not natural. But again, that's just part of the journey. Um, and then, but see now, or like the past few years, I feel like I perform better when there's a camera on me or if there's a mic in front of me. I've become a better version of myself. Um, I try and be as motivational as I can or as inspiring as I can. And um, just tap into 
other sides of me that I don't necessarily see or project to a high level when there's no a camera or a mic in front of me. And I think that comes down to knowing that there's an audience watching me right now. Uh, and I just want to do my best in this life. There's one life that we've got. So as soon as a camera or a mic's put in front of me, it's like I just switch on. Well, I think the more comfortable you are with yourself, the better it will be. Yeah. In, in any situation. Mm. Like, I, what you're talking about when you're doing this, when you're first doing those stories, right? I feel like that comes back to the sort of Scottish culture thing. Because when I started doing them on the Instagram and stuff, it, you're kind, you feel as if people are going to watch this and be like, this is cringy or whatever. Mm. And it's, if it, there's a certain way of thinking in Scotland where if you don't fit in a certain box, yeah. Then, then you're automatically branded weird or silly or whatever. Mm. And then, as soon as you get a wee bit of success, people are like, "Oh, he, that's good that he did that." But yeah. as if you don't get success quickly, it's almost one of those things where everyone just brands you of as this sort of loof, if you like, you know. Yeah. And I think that's something that you've sort of had to deal with in the past. A hundred percent. That's why, like, the way I move on social media, a lot of people don't like it because. <laughs> I don't move on social media the way I am now. So what I'm trying to say is I'll say certain stuff and I'll do certain stuff as if I'm already a superstar and people hate that. But it's, that's my way of manifesting almost. If I want to become this person, and by the way, I don't even want to just be a superstar celebrity, this guy, just for the sake of it. I want that because I know more eyes are going to be on me. That's more eyes I could then inspire, motivate, and whatever it may be, I'm on this mission to make my 10 year old happy, right? My, well, me as a 10 year old happy. I had dreams when I was 10. I'm chasing them now. So me online, I'll sometimes do certain stuff as if, as I should be doing if I had 20 million followers, but fuck it, I'm going to do it now. People hate that. And it's like people then, like what you just say is people judge you what you are now rather than if you were successful, they'd have a different point of view. But it's the same, every celebrity, they were once, and me and you, our position right now, they were once no celebrity, and they would have had what we're getting now. But now that they're successful, the, the, the opinions changed because they are there. So when I say, for example, I don't know, if I do something amazing for society, right? People say, oh, you're only doing it because of this, you're only doing it for that. And I'm like, well, how come... You judge me for it because I'm no a millionaire and I'm no a celebrity, but you praise Mr. Beast, the YouTuber, for doing the exact same thing. The only thing they will reply is, you're comparing yourself to Mr. Beast. I'm like, no, I'm no, but I've just done the exact same thing as they've, he's done. But since I'm no at the top, you're judging and saying I'm only doing it for these certain things, but yet you're praising him for doing it. Do you understand? And that's, that's a great comparison to what you're saying. They'll judge you if you've no made it and on the come up, but as soon as you've made it, a whole different opinion almost yeah, do you know that was actually really well put i never thought about it like that mm. because it's it, it is true like you see the bigger the person is yeah if they're doing something that's exactly with, like a documentary for example mm. if somebody with a really big platform like mr beast for example does yeah. something like that people would be the majority of people would be praising it saying that's amazing and yeah so it's like sorry to no, sorry. Uh, butt in right but it's like Music artists, for example, let's just say there's a rapper, a Scottish rapper. He's making tunes right now and he's no blown up. He's getting judged for that. Oh, look at you. You're trying to be a rapper. But see, as soon as in 10 years time, he's the biggest rapper in the world. They'll then look back at that music video and say how inspiring it is because he's been working his arse off all that time. Oh, look at this rare footage of him rapping there. But that rare footage once got rinsed. Everybody was taking the piss at that because he wasn't he hadn't made it yet. But now that he's here, it's an inspiring video. Do you understand? So as soon as you prove everybody wrong and you prove yourself right, the tables turn. I think the biggest like the biggest point of all this discussion here is that, you know, the only person that's gonna believe in you at a certain point is yourself. Yeah. And, you know, that's to me, I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is gonna. And I think what you're doing is you're trying to carry yourself in a certain way to get to a point that you, you want to be in. Yeah. This is what we're saying. We're saying in, in the place that we're in, that's just not something that's sort of 
socially acceptable. Because mm. even people who will be listening to this conversation think that's, um, you know, it's crazy that he thinks he can do this. And, mm. But then why not? I mean, how many people do you know that have got jobs from, from 9 to 5 doing things that they hate? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and then they're criticizing people that are going outside the box. Like, yeah. If there's, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, like, that has not been ignorant to the fact that there's certain social classes that does have an impact on that. If you're mm. living in poverty somewhere, it, it makes it very difficult to even see any sort of limelight. But if you're in a position where, like you say, you've, you've got an iPhone, mm -hmm. then, you know, you're, you're in a place enough to, to do something different. Yeah. We have, a lot of media platforms that's why i've got a podcast myself it's about trying to show people that you know people with disabilities aren't, aren't some weird alien no. part of society mm -hmm. and we're actually normal you know like yeah if, I, if you were sitting in this chair and i was sitting in your chair mm -hmm. people would think you were the guy in the wheelchair and not me mm -hmm. so so that's kind of the point of what we're doing what we're doing here is like yeah. we can have similar ideas of this mm -hmm. sort of area of the topic now but if people see us like going down the street, they would think that they would think that we're completely different because I'm in a wheelchair and you're not. Mm -hmm. Whereas that, that's just not true, you know. It's, it's, no, exactly. It's how society perceives it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I like the way you think about things, and there was there was, there was some ideas, and the and a less and a less uh, serious side of things, I guess. There were some things in, in the documentary that I was quite curious about in terms of. Um, you were talking about how you had sort of a period where you you would be going out all the time mm -hmm. on these nights out. Yep. <laughs> and I just, you know, I couldn't help but wonder, like, what does a night out with Kaz Milligan look like? <laughs> a mess, man. I'm going. I'm going to be honest, because uh, there was a point where I was going out four, five, six times a week, and I would, I was never the one to go out. Like, obviously, go out to have a good time, but I'd go out just to get blackout drunk, steaming, and a mess, and I'd wake up in some random house and. It was just a mess, man. I'm going to be honest. But, like, even though that lifestyle, doing that for a number of years, drove me into that dark place that I spoke about in the documentary, I do not regret it, man. Like, that that part of life, I feel like m majority, anyway, people go through it. Like, going out at night, so it's cool. It's, it's amazing, bro. Like, I made the best ex uh, memories uh, going through that period. But obviously, one or two times a week is cool when I'm doing it four or five times a week for a number of years, that's how it led me into that dark, dark place that I spoke about in the doc. Um, so I feel like if I could go back, I'd maybe just do it the same amount of people, the same amount of times a week. Everybody else re usually does it once or twice a week. Um, but just doing it as excessive as I've done it, um, isn't it going to lead to a good life really? Yeah. It's having the moderation. And yeah. one of the things that you'd mentioned in that was the kind of, the sort of drunken and drug use and I feel like drug use particularly in Scotland is like a very sort of prevalent thing yeah when it comes to nice out and things like that and, and when you spoke about being in that sort of dark place and having that sort of epiphany if you like of wanting to change things and stuff yeah. like that then do you also feel like your change of lifestyle when you decided to stay sober and not do those things mm. had a big change in, in your actual mental state a hundred percent. Um, bearing in mind, I started my hustling, like chasing my dreams while I was still drinking. So I was slowly gaining this strong, strong mindset, but I was still partying. Um, but then once I went through the dark stage and I came out and I decided to be sober, that's when it was just another level. I just like, I got introduced almost to a whole new level of mindset and it was such a overwhelming but an exciting time uh, and that's when I started going viral I started my business and everything was just coming together and it's because of that change of a lifestyle um, again these things wouldn't have happened if I was still living that demonic lifestyle going out all the time blah 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 because that's what I focused on all I, f all I really cared about was going out at the weekend and getting girls that's all I actually cared about and when that's your priority almost, you're not going to see the opportunities that's out there because you're putting up a blinder. Do you know what I mean? But as soon as I became sober and I was like, right, the girls can wait, the night, all that stuff can wait. I need a career. I need to get my life back on track. And that's when I started looking for these opportunities, seeing them, things started coming 
and life just got fucking amazing. I think, you know, there's a big point in there of just focusing on yourself, you know, because we, we live in a time where it's so easy to get distracted by all these things. Yeah. And there's a lot of insecurities about, for, especially for men with women in terms of online perceptions and just, you know, mm-hmm. wanting that, I, I guess, fulfillment if you've got insecurities. Like for me, I was, for years, I had a lot of kind of deep insecurities about relationships with women and things like that. that yeah. I've since dealt with and it's helped now that I'm handsome as fuck. But uh, <laughs> yes, bro. Come on. If, but the, the point is, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, had to, I had to get some compliment in there that, you know, when we're, when we're, you know, when you're talking about how you were able to put that to, to one side, if you were talking to like a, like young men about this sort of right now that, they, they feel as if they, they, they need that sort of a gratification of a girlfriend or just because there's there's a difference between wanting somebody because you because you really feel something for them and you like them and wanting somebody because you feel a certain sort of lack of confidence in yourself yeah. and you want that you want their approval to feel good about yourself which i think is quite a common thing for young men in their 20s teenagers and so if somebody came to you and said that this is a, this is like a, a kind of, I don't know, an issue for me to, to just put to one side because it could be a constant di- distraction. Mm-hmm. What would your advice to them be for that? I would probably just say like try and uh, focus on the man you want to be for the rest of your life. Uh, what characteristics do you want? What attributes do you want? Like what skills do you want? And whatever that is. And as soon as you build up, that man that you really want to be, start working on that. Start just working on yourself, man. Sometimes, uh, for example, maybe I was insecure one time because I was broke. Because I was broke when I was going out clubbing all the time and stuff. Um, so when I was broke, that was like, oh, fuck, maybe I'm not going to get a certain girlfriend because I've not got money in the bank. I can't provide certain, I can't even take them on dates. Do you know what I mean? So then I was like, right, cool, let me start working on a career because that will bring money or whether your confidence lacks from being a wee bit shy or just having no really any confidence. Start working on that. Like, right, how can I slowly and comfortably start building confidence, whether that's going to certain hobbies that you've got and start mingling with people that's got similarities or whatever it is man just start working on you um and as soon as you accept and realize that you love the person that you are that's when the confidence comes in no everybody you don't need to be that guy that you see on instagram that's shredded to the nines and got all these girls and blah 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 that might just no be you do you understand and maybe he, he could maybe no be happy later in the future do you understand so everybody has just sort of got their own perspective on like i don't know man i just feel like if you accept and work on you and become the best version of you the confidence will just come i believe but again i'm I'm no i don't know i feel like i'm not really the perfect guy to give that sort of advice almost i think that's a you know that's a pretty good answer to be fair Mm. because it's all about self-fulfillment if you're not fulfilled you know you don't want to be chasing people for for something that you feel bad about in in yourself because when you actually do love yourself and respect yourself you Mm -hmm. attract that in your life Mm -hmm. whereas if you're if you're doing it for the wrong reasons then it will become a toxic thing yeah so it's not necessarily that that were, that were either of us are the best people to give advice on these things mm. but it's just a case of like it's not necessarily about being for lack of a better way of putting it qualified but more so just having it in a general discussion of like it's an area of society, society I feel like that's kind of kept up on us mm. with social media and Instagram and, and yeah. like Love Island and things like that mm. you watch Love Island it's like Six guys with six packs. You know, yeah. Like, but what chance have I got? If these, yeah. guys, if these guys are single with them, what the, <laughs> what uh, the fuck? No, am I exactly. Doing? Exactly. <laughs> it, can, it can it can take a toll. But like, I'm, I'll, I'll give my experience. Like, I started working on me and the mission that I'm on to inspire and motivate people. Right. So, like, I go into schools and I talk to the kids and inspire the kids. I work on my business. Doesn't need to be a massive business. But when I'm like working on all these things and I'm inspiring and motivating people, I can take a step back and be like, do you know what? I'm a nice guy. I'm a genuine guy. I'm doing good to the world. I'm putting out a positive impact to the world that we live in. 
whether that's a big impact or tiny impact, it's still a good impact. And knowing that and knowing that I'm such a fucking great person to be alive in this generation gives me confidence. And I'm not saying I'm great and I'm better than anybody, but knowing what I do, I put out positive shit. Like I'm helping people. Do you understand? And it's all on the internet for everybody to see. So like, I just, I don't do anything negative. And me knowing I'm such a genuinely nice guy gives me confidence. Yeah, like, it's, it's a really interesting way of putting it because I feel as if that's, if you're, you know, regardless of what anyone else says, if you know within yourself that everything you're doing is coming from a good place yep. and you've got good intentions, yep. then I think that maybe some people, like, when you said certain things in the past, and it's like, that is ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. uh, dinosaurs aren't real. Which I still believe that. <laughs> I do, man. I do. I mean, honestly. We need, we need, we need to pick, we need to pick, uh, pick on that a little yeah, bit. We we can, but, but the point is, is that I think people have this way of, when they hear things like that, they, they just sort of decide to put you in this box of, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Like, whereas, it's actually, if they were able to, to kind of, because I think it's like, you know what you know, and, and if you don't know something, it, that like people have this way of judge, judging people too much, I think. Yep. And I think and you've been judged quite a bit in, in, that, in that area. Uh, that just comes down to people that are close-minded. Like, I can see a clip, I could watch a clip right now, a guy I've never seen before, and I could really disagree with what he's saying. But I'm not going to then say, I hate that guy. Because I've only seen 20 seconds of his whole entire life. Do you understand? So I'd be like, right, I don't know, I agree with what he's saying, but he's maybe doing this or he's maybe saying it for this reasons and that, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? And that's been open-minded. But people, if you, like what I said earlier, if you come across a TikTok of mine, a certain one, and you, and that's the first time you've ever seen me, you're probably going to judge me for that, which is normal. But... That's no my problem for you judging me just off that one 20 second video. Because there's hours upon hours of me on podcasts, giving back to the community, going into schools to inspire them, dropping gems, being motivational, inspirational. And if you're no seen that, right, and you're only seeing the bullshit 20 second, I understand you're going to judge me from that, but you're close minded. You're judging somebody's whole character just of one clip. So if you feel the need to judge me off that one video, Go feel the need to go watch the hours worth. And then yeah. somebody might say to me like, oh, well, it's not up to me to go and watch you for hours. Well, Danny, judge me then. Or for one video. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. I think that's kind of the point I was trying to get at. Is, yeah. is this idea that, you know, you can say one, you can say something about a certain area where people just go, that's whatever. And then, but then they disregard the fact that what you're trying to do is is from a genuine good place. Yep. Because I'll be honest, I came in, mate, and I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks because I knew you were coming in. Yeah. And then, because in the past, I've watched some of your content and I've been like, wait, is this guy just full of shit? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this guy's deal, you know? And, yeah, and, but at least you were questioning it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Questioning it, it's amazing. Like, if you just say, there's a difference between somebody saying, this guy's this, this guy's that, but you just says, is this guy this? Is that questioning? It's amazing. It was. It was. It made me curious to find out if that was yeah real or not. Yeah. And I knew that if I could get you in a room and talk to you, because mm -hmm. you can. Because I think regardless of what somebody's saying, mm -hmm. you get a lot from from how, how it feels and, and the way that. Because like, where you're saying all this stuff to me, you've looked me direct directly in my eyes, right? And I mm -hmm. feel as if that's not to sound so romantic, now, but I feel, <laughs> <laughs> I feel as if like there's certain things when people are being disingenuous where they, they'll kind of look away like they'll, be, they'll say things and they'll, kinda, yeah. they'll look away and you can kind of tell and they're a bit twitchy and mm -hmm. you know what I mean but everything they're saying feels yeah. real it feels mm -hmm. true I don't mm -hmm. doubt like I don't what I'm trying to say is I don't doubt your intentions of any of this which mm -hmm. is which I think is you know really interesting because like I said like you can have there is that natural insight it tends to be like wait it's a you know what is the deal with this guy and it made me really curious as to how you would be and I can sense that it's real you know so mm. so that is something that I think I just thought I'd make that point because once you do dig in and you can 
you actually take the time to listen to what you're saying. Yeah. You can tell that it's coming from a genuine place. I appreciate you know? that, man. And that's that's what I do really appreciate. People going to do basically their homework on me, their due diligence, as they say. Um, and then they will eventually realise this guy is a genuine guy. Like, fair enough, some of his content on TikTok is bullshit. <laughs> and I know that for a fact, but half, no, I'd say about 50% of my TikToks up until now is me just winding up haters because that's where my haters are on TikTok. So if there's 600 comments, if people try to take the piss at me, I'm going to just wind them up more because it's fun. It's not that deep. Um, but if you want to go see the more serious content, go watch certain YouTube videos on my channel or go watch other podcasts that I've been on. There's plenty. Um, and you'll see the genuine side to me. For sure. And uh, I don't doubt that. But just to go... <laughs> So now that we've established that I, I, I believe what you're saying, yeah, we need to pick up on that dinosaur thing because mm. <laughs> because uh, I always I heard that on Riley's gaff. Yeah, we were talking about it, and I'm like, all, all I'm thinking about is surely he doesn't genuinely believe that. <laughs> Do you really I do, believe man. that? <laughs> I'm, no, it's no. I'm just open minded enough t to realize there's a possibility for it to be all made up for a massive franchise for the government to make billions per year. Dinosaurs, toys, magazines, films, cartoons, programs. There's so many dinosaurs, things out there for you to buy, and the government, the government makes money off every single thing it sold. Do you know the thing that annoyed me about when I listened to that video the most was that there was a small part of it by the end of it that went, you know, <laughs> I have got a point. That's what I'm saying. And if you truly listen to what I'm saying, there's no chance you could sit there and say, "Ah, oh, nah, he's talking shit." Everybody would be like. He's got a point. It's just something that you never, you would never think of it like that. Right? Exactly, and nobody <laughs> does. But I'm just so open minded, minded that I thought about it, and it's just people just constantly, just instantly throw the bullshit card in it. But if you really think about it, it's true, bro. Like, not one person listening has tested the DNA of a bone, a dinosaur bone. Nobody does. It's the scientists that have done it, right? So we're just believing what comes out the scientists' mouth. <laughs> like it's Wait, I'll give you a cut argument to that thing. Right. Because I was trying to think of something that I could use to try and make the point of how I mean it's a ridiculous counterpoint point, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just something to to think of it. Yeah. See like dragons, right? Yeah. Dragons are just as marketed you could argue as dinosaurs in yep. terms of movies and, mm -hmm. and shows and like Game of Thrones and things like that, right? But but they but nobody's cut about saying dragons are real. So then... it's a good point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if, surely if, if if dinosaurs were real, then uh, weren't real, then like it would be the same. Do you know what I mean? Dragons and dinosaurs would be the same. But they're not. Because no, nobody's cut about the same dragons are real. So I just thought I would kind of... That's true. <laughs> but then let me counter again. <laughs> People come to me, right, and say, what about alligators? I could then say to you, what about dragonflies? Right, right. I could yeah. now argue against you saying that dragons were once real. <laughs> if yeah, I want to go down that route. But then, but then, surely someday they would be saying that they, like, if, if what I'm trying to say is if dinosaurs weren't real, right, then surely, and they were doing it because of that reason, mm -hmm. then surely they would do the same thing to dragons. Maybe they just never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> No, because, like, I don't know, man. Maybe, <laughs> fuck knows. Well, we need to, we need to raise some deal later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. We need to do. The thing is, I, I genuinely, I would love to sit down with, like, I don't know what they're called. Like, some. A what? Is that what it is? Like, a dinosaur <laughs> guy. Uh, I'd love to sit down with one and honestly leave them speechless because they're going to come because the thing is they're going to come to me with all these numbers and science and I'll sit there and say to them have you picked a bone found it yourself and tested it yourself the answer is going to be no they're going to test a bone that was given to them while they were going through education that's it we, we need to get a, pal a paleontologist to talk to you ASAP. I would love that that would be that would be box office stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I might film a YouTube video going into like, 
a museum in Scotland <laughs> and I'll just call bullshit on the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you about it, man. That would definitely bang. That would, that would, that would, <laughs> would. bang. That would bang. That would, oh, man, that's brilliant. Right, okay, so there's there's one area now that here here's a here's a slight like similar sort of thing, but mm -hmm. maybe a bit more of a touchy subject, right? Yeah. Because I seen this and I was like, I was talking to a friend about it, and I, I thought I said, "There's no way that he doesn't know that." Like, right? <laughs> it was that it was that Irish flag situation where you. I never knew. <laughs> Honestly, bro, I, I I never got to sit my geography test because I was that stupid at geography. I genuinely never. Was that <laughs> when I went to Belfast? Yeah, yeah. I never knew. I thought because for for the listeners um, or the viewers, I went to Belfast a few weeks ago. I had a few podcasts there, and I put on my story saying I took a picture of the flight and the plane that I was going on, and I says uh, on my way to Belfast, and then I put the Irish flag emoji. I, I didn't know that that wasn't a part of Ireland. Like, I knew that there was, like, it was Northern Ireland, and I knew, like, to get into Dublin, you need a passport, but to get into Belfast, I just need my driving license. I knew all of that, but I just thought it was still the same flag. But I knew that, I, I knew, I know there's politics involved, and there's massive, like, beef or whatever, but I, I never knew it was different flags. <laughs> But I got backlash for that. Yeah. <laughs> I did, yeah. man. It's a pretty, it's a pretty huge conflict, mate. That sounds uh, like... And the thing is, I am, I'm slightly educated on the mad conflict and the politics involved, but I never knew it was a different flag. Celtic Avengers cast. Uh, <laughs> I don't watch football anymore. I've not got an interest for football anymore. But I was football daft up until I was like fifteen, um, and I grew up Rangers. I did. Well, I'm, 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 uh, now I'm trying to, you know, be neutral for the viewers, but what I will say is I'm proud of the fact you're no longer Rangers. Mm, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, see, this is a sticky one because I don't like football anymore, right? Uh -huh. So when I see comments when I'm on live, like, Celtic or Rangers, like, blah, blah, uh -huh. I always try and ignore it. Because, bro, if you pick one, the other one's no even going to fuck with me anymore. <laughs> yeah. Do you understand? I'm like, bro, yeah. I didn't care about football. So that's yeah. why I know what I answer because I did grow up mega Rangers fan. But I now just don't give a fuck about football. I'm going to be honest. I think it's it's definitely the better way to be in when you're when you're putting out the content that you are because yep. it's so it's such a fifty fifty split all around Scotland. Mm. So you're basically taking away half your audience <laughs> exactly. for, for for you know threatening, and that's why even as I'm meeting a wee joke about that there, I'm like I, I really as much as I'm I'm Celtic daft right. I go to the games and all that. I'm also aware of the fact that it's that it's. You know, we're all like I have pals at Rangers fans that are very much like me. We just mm -hmm. support different teams. Yeah. So you just kind of it's about having a bit of maturity as you grow up to not be that guy that's forty five years old on Twitter being like fucking these bastards and all that. You know, it's like bro. I say this all the time, man. Like football's enjoyable. If you're a fan of football, cool. Go watch your games. Have a blast. That's like, do you know what I mean? Like a a good hobby. But if it's got to the point where you're fighting over the sport and you're getting in trouble and you're a dad and you're <laughs> shouting and swearing and getting all this, grow the fuck up. I'm sorry, but holy shit. It's just too far, man. It's like, it's a sport. These guys playing on the pitch do not even know you exist. And you're getting in fights and trouble as a 40, 50 year old man over 11 guys kicking a ball. It gets too far. But if you enjoy football and you're mature enough to enjoy the sport and have a laugh and blah, 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 cool, amazing. As much as I, I get where you're coming from, I, I I would be remiss not to say the fact that if, if I'm at a Celtic Rangers game, I enjoy hearing all sorts of stuff coming from my head. <laughs> like, like, I think there's such an intense, like, hot rivalry there. Yeah. Uh, that it, that it's, it's, there's, there's a level of sport which is so, you know, it dictates people's happiness at times and so that's mm. but I think that just being aware of the fact that it doesn't need to be something that you're you're giving out so much hate for I think it's just football yeah. I think it's such a toxic sport for the fan base like yeah. look at boxing for example you're literally punching fuck out your opponent and at the end you shake their hand S football the fans they're kicking a football into a net and the fans are trying to kill each other. 
No, I mean that's <laughs> mental, mate. Do you know what? I'd never heard that comparison before, but it's a as it a fair point. And speaking of boxing, Richard Dixon. Is this actually going to happen? Are you actually going to have a boxing match with him? Nah, nah, nah. So that was just marketing. Me and uh, Richard started his own podcast and he gets a guest in the back of his Rolls Royce and they just speak about business and stuff like that. And I believe I was his first guest. Yes, you were. Um, yeah. I, so we had found that and we're like, right, how can we market this? Um, so we'd done our face off. And then he just said, Richard Dixon versus Kaz Milligan coming or date to be announced. No, and everybody would think that we were fighting, but really it was just for a podcast. Because I was, I mean, I'm quite glad to hear that, to be honest with you, because you know this guy's got like a legit background in, in fighting people. So uh, they are. Have you? I grew up boxing. You grew up boxing? My dad's a retired, undefeated professional boxer, captain of Scotland, travelled the world. What, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fact. You should, you should do a podcast with your dad. That would be sick. That would, that's probably a big idea. Yep. Big idea. Mm. I tell you what, come back with your dad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Um, um, but no, uh, because I did, I don't know if you know this, but I did a wheelchair boxing match with a, ah, sick. a former UFC fighter. Oh, really? Uh, and no, it actually happened. That's that. sick. See, every time that I say that, my head goes, I can't believe that was real. Uh, um, and they really did punch me right in the face. It was, uh, it was, it was an experience. Um, so the point is, is that I'll take you both on a wheelchair boxing match at the same time. And win. <laughs> nah, <probably> will, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually. Do you know something? It's something you should you should think about doing at some point because I tell you what, man, it was a, it was a buzz. And oh, yeah, it, it was is, such man. a buzz. Yeah, no, definitely, bro. I call it. I've said so many times, I'll box anybody if it makes sense. Obviously, Cash Milligan versus uh, Keaton once. Here we go. <laughs> let's, let's, but, sign, let's sign the contract, mate. Let's, let's sign it. it. <laughs> let's sign it. But um. There's so many people that will publicly call me out, and as soon as it gets cl- close to being serious, they always some just start chatting shit, and they'll come up with some excuse or they will flip the narrative as if I shout it when really I fucking never. And, Tommy Fury, no, uh, Tommy Fury <laughs> would get spat now, John. But um, <laughs> uh, it's just it's a load of shit, man. As soon as people sort of realise that they've not had any experience in boxing, and I've grew up in the sport they then start maybe imagining a different result to what they thought and think, oh, I kind of fuck this. I don't know what I lose to Kaz Milligan online. And that's the reality you're going to lose. Do you ever still do boxing, Jay? I've not trained in like two years or something, but it's something I just sort of go in and out. I could go for within four, six weeks, I'm back short. Well, that's another... Kind of content idea for you you could do like a, a, a um vlog of you doing like a boxing camp i well that's what i'm saying if, that's why i so badly wanted to box someday because i'll capitalize off it i'll do a whole series i'll have camera crew following me every single day at the gym it'll be so sick mate i've genuinely fit you, <laughs> would you actually, let's do it. <laughs> I would do it. no because i i said to um i did that i think it was 2021 yep in, in september and um, the guy that I thought was Artem Lobov, he, he was in the UFC, he's done bare knuckle boxing, he, he's, a, he's a proper fighter, I mean this guy was intimidating, he's actually a really good guy, but um, we'd done it and it was like, a, it was like, I think it was like a couple of rounds for like one minute. Right. And and because what happens with the wheelchair right, is obviously I'm not going to stand up and fit you because that's impossible. Mm. Give me a break here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but what happens with wheelchair boxing is you have you're, you're both sitting in like a manual chair, right. and the, the chair kind of stays stationary, but you're sort so you're sort of quite close like you're quite close to each other directly for the whole time essentially, mm. which makes it I think which makes it better because you can't really. There's no, there's no, oh, I'm tired, I'm going to clinch. Or yeah. no, they're constantly like, can't you hit yeah. this guy and move? Yeah. And, and um, I think th- there's an element of it that's quite entertaining. But what I really enjoyed about it was that that guy obviously was a, was an actual pro fighter that, mm. that wasn't in the wheelchair. By him, by him being in the, in the wheelchair doing that with me, what it does is it kind of helps remove that stigma from wheelchair users of the idea yeah. that we can do these things. And, yeah. and it just shows you how... It's just a physical obstacle, not necessarily something that stops us from doing things. Mm. So it's always been something that I've wanted to do again, but just he wanted to do it with me in Glasgow, mm-hmm. and it just hasn't quite materialised since then. But we're still talking about it. 
We just said you were talking about that there. I was like, if you if you need somebody to fight you, man, just like, do it, man. I'll take two minutes out of my day and I'll it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I didn't expect that to go to go there. But <laughs> speaking of speaking of like disability and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, I'd be remiss not to kind of dive into that a little bit with you because mm -hmm. that's what I feel is kind of different about my podcast compared to probably every other podcast that you've done. Yeah, is the fact that. For those that are tuning in and for guys that don't necessarily know who I am, I have cerebral palsy and I've been in a wheelchair my whole life. And I think that for me, what I'm trying to do is sort of break down the barriers that we face every day yeah. and remove the stigma and let people know that, you know, you can live a normal life. Disability doesn't need to be that death sentence that it's made out to be. You mm. know, like you always hear those stories of somebody that can, that's fully able, that, that has no physical issues. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're paralyzed and it's like the life is over mm -hmm. and that's just not it's just not true it's not the way that we need to be seen um you're talking about being wanting to be inspirational and things mm -hmm. like that it's never really been a problem for me mm -hmm. because and i do like go to the toilet dinner shite is inspirational people for me mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's like you can just date anything and it can be the most inspirational thing so that's always been something that's really like sort of green my gears because I don't want to be inspirational just because I'm in a wheelchair. I want to be inspirational by what the actions that I take and the things that I do. Yeah. Um. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is obviously it's something that I, you probably haven't spoken before. I know your 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 knowledge on it is potentially limited, but yeah. In your experience of doing these things with your your influence influencing people without necessarily being an influencer. And, and and having big platforms, do you have you had any kind of contact with people that disabilities? And it also, does that occur to you to like have when you have like closing bands and stuff like that? The idea of maybe having people, somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with any kind of disability, being part of that brand. Uh, we've had uh, I've got quite a few um, customers that have like, for example, been in wheelchairs and stuff like that. And again, like my stuff's for everybody, bro. Like. Do you know what I mean? You're still wearing clothes, so everybody's got access to Legans, sunglasses and hoodies and stuff like that. Um, and then, if, but the thing is, if there's a customer out there that's like, oh, I maybe need something modified, I do not mind taking a loss in my money and saying to my manufacturer, for this one item we need, blah, blah, blah. It's going to cost me more. I'm not going to make profit off it. But if, like, I, I just love my customers. I love, and the thing is, if it's going to make anybody smile as well, then so be it. Um, but like, even my mum, she's a like a support teacher in a primary school that works with like kids with disabilities and stuff like that. So I've kind of always sort of grew up um, open minded enough, almost like because my mum will come in and maybe tell me some stories or whatever, um, and I might go up to the school to visit my mom and the kids are there uh, and so I've had those interactions uh, again as you say I'm very limited when it comes to like knowledge and stuff like that because I've never experienced it uh, or whatever um, so I, I would even love for to have this conversation further with you and maybe even expand my knowledge in it yeah it's, it's definitely something that I'll, I'll be up for doing that I think mm -hmm. the more that I can because I think it's with disability, the, the biggest thing is that people just, it's not even that, I, I, I grew up thinking it was because people were were really, um, had this dislike of people with disabilities or just didn't want to give us the opportunity. But the older you get and you mature past that it's sort of feeling of, um, what's the word, I, I guess, kind of feel sorry for yourself and you feel that mm. you feel as if the world's kind of against you as you go past that you realize that it's mainly just not known it's so not in the public we're not in the public eye we're not discussed mm. we're kind of hidden in this corner of society that's not really spoke about mm. so then when it comes to actually people knowing you know i think it's almost like if you'd never if you'd never met anyone in the wheelchair before and then you see them for the first time it's like it's almost like seeing an alien because you're like I don't know I don't know how to to deal with this I don't know yeah. how to approach it yeah what is the do's and don'ts with well, the do's and don'ts is we're just the same yeah we're the same mm -hmm. because we all go through things differently and we all feel things differently mm -hmm. but we're all human at the end of the day yeah so there's no new emotion that in you felt in your life is something that somebody else has felt mm -hmm. whether that's and and a lot of what I've felt in my life through the bad times and stuff like that 
even if I could walk, I would have still probably felt them in some way. And I think that's kind of the point of what the podcast, this podcast is about, mm-hmm. is like try to show people that regardless of me being a wheelchair or not, the the way that you've removed that stigma and showed that we're all the same is by having conversations like this mm-hmm. for people to listen to watch us and go, yeah, you know, Keen Keen and Kaz are quite similar and some yeah. because we've been through similar sort of struggles, mm-hmm. even though in a lot of ways physically people would think people may look at me and, and instantly think that my life has been harder than yours mm-hmm. for some reason. You know what I mean? So it's, mm-hmm. it's the idea that you know we can all relate to talking about what we've been through and that mm-hmm. struggle, and then that also humanizes somebody with a disability mm-hmm. so my point to this being that it's not necessarily uh coming from a bad place it's just it's just purely a lack of education a lack of um knowledge and, and awareness on mm-hmm. the subject and i think that's when people actually hear me talk about it and and can take something from it they realize it opens up this different part of your brain where you go do you know, I'd never even thought about it really. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily that I'm out here trying to um, tell people everything about what every person has been through because we all have different things and stuff like that. But it's just the fact that it's there, that it's a real thing and that we're not some sort of different species yeah. you know, over here. Mm-hmm. And and we have, we deserve the right to have equal opportunities. And, mm-hmm. and when there's businesses and different things like that, having access and having having things that people with disabilities need to use is all i mean the this is probably an analogy that, you, that you'll that you'll like right because I, i've used it quite a few times mm-hmm. and i feel like it really encap- you know encapsulates it perfectly what i'm trying to say have you ever, <laughs> and paul's probably sitting there thinking he said this story on my mind right? <laughs> but you ever seen the movie elf yeah right i just think that so you know how when Will Ferrell goes to the North Pole, mm-hmm. he by our definition is a fully able human being, mm-hmm. right? But when he goes to the North Pole, nothing, nothing he can't fit in anywhere. Mm-hmm. They can't, they don't know what to do with him because he he can't go and do anything because nothing's designed for him. Mm-hmm. So it's not that he is disabled at the North Pole; it's that he it's that nothing mm-hmm. is designed for him to use. They try to put him in the workshop or this shop or whatever. And nothing fits for him, ah. and, 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 all, and all they also, all they also going like that. What do we do about this guy? And in that movie, it was so strange. And this is a part that I've not said before about it. Was that he actually? You can see that when he's there, and they don't know what to do with him, he hears them talking about it, and you can see him being really dejected by the idea that he doesn't know, he doesn't know how to fit in. Yeah. And I'm watching that as a wee guy, and I'm going, "This is what I feel. Like. This is what my life is like." Yeah. And mm. on, you know. In this world where you just feel as if it's a, uh, you can't, you don't have anywhere to fit in and mm. nobody really understands what it is you're going through. Yeah. But it's not the disability that causes that problem. Mm. It's, the, it's the way the world's designed. Yeah. It's causing the problem. Right. That's interesting. So like, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I don't know, I hope to God this does not come across like disrespectful to anybody that's disabled or that, but obviously you're saying like, we're the same. You want to be looked at as, just another person rather than a disabled person, if that makes sense. So then do you think that people need to get rid of like a victim mindset almost? Or do you think that's still important to have? No, Which I, you're, I don't know what, I, yeah, hopefully I'm not saying anything yeah. shit I, there. No, I, get what you're, I, no, I, I do, I get what you're trying to say. But w- one thing that I really want to touch on there is that, is that I used to be of the mindset of I want to. I want to not be seen as disabled, and I want to be seen as normal. But if that used to be what I would think. Mm-hmm. But see now, what I've realised the bigger picture of that is, it's not that I don't want to be seen as disabled, and I want to be seen as normal. It's not. It's not that. It's that. Two things. One thing is that everybody literally it has been proven that mm-hmm. literally every single person on this planet is different. Yeah. Right. So whether I could. So imagine I wasn't in a wheelchair. Right. And I could walk and all that. Me and you would still be different. Mm. We, you know, yeah. I'm saying that we feel the same emotions, mm-hmm. but we're still different people. Yeah. So my point is, is that normal in itself doesn't really exist, mm. and it was created as a thing to make us all kind of fall in line. Yeah. You know, you want to you want to do the do do the nine to five, do the 
you know, it's all about routine and keeping yourself in a box. Mm -hmm. That's what normal was made for. Normal was made for keeping everybody thinking the same sort of a way. Mm -hmm. When really, we're all at our best when we're embracing the differences in ourselves yeah. and who we actually are. So it's not about not wanting to be seen as disabled because I'm, I think the other point to that is that trying to express to people that being disabled and being called disabled is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's not, of course not. It's just, but it's just, but the problem is you get an iPhone, right? And the iPhone, if you enter the password, bad, you know, uh, wrong. Too many times it comes up saying this phone is now disabled. Mm -hmm. That, it's the way that we're, it's the way that mainstream society uses the word mm. that makes it bad rather than the way that I live my life. Yeah. So it's the connotation behind it mm. has been used in such a negative way for so long. Right. That it's yeah. seen that way. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say is that no, it doesn't need to be seen this way. Being disabled is not a bad thing. It's just another difference that we all have. And that if we get away from this idea that normal, because normal doesn't actually exist. No, nah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, I totally understood your, your question. I think that people, um, it's a hard, it's a hard way to figure out how to word things, but it's almost, yeah. it's almost trying to say to people that like asking questions, if you don't understand something about it, it's good to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And most people with disability want you to know, mm -hmm. because if you know and you understand it, it makes our life easier. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. I hope that I hope that made sense. No, it does, man. I appreciate you sort of like openly speaking up and giving me the knowledge. I appreciate. I just I wanted to. I just wanted to make sure that we touched on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, how long have we went for here? Flew, it's flew fun. by. Yeah. No, listen. I've really enjoyed this conversation, mm -hmm. um, and I get to, to kind of wrap things up. My my big question to you is: We've talked about how you want to. You want to be you want to be seen as this more serious person and who you really are and, yeah. and and show and inspire people and when you look at when you look at twenty twenty three, what are the, what are the, the the big goals in your head for this year? Um, see, I've got certain goals in the grand scheme of things, but I try and not put too much pressure. Even though I perform good with pressure, I try and not put pressure on like, oh, I want this goal for this year, that goal for that year, blah blah blah. I just want to like. For example, 2023, everybody's got to take me more serious. I'm still going to enjoy trolling. I'm still <laughs> going to enjoy winding people up. Do not get me wrong. But there's going to be a lot more serious content where you can see me for who I am. For example, this conversation, whoever watches this isn't going to be like, oh, that's that Kaz for TikTok trolling, blah, blah, blah. They're going to be like, oh, shit, this guy's just a genuine guy thriving for success and wanting to make that 10-year-old Kaz Milligan happy. I'm chasing my dreams and that's all. And Along the way, I'm going to inspire people to chase their dreams. I'm going to motivate people to do what they believe is best for them if they've got good intentions to do so. And there's not one negative thing that I'm going to do in this life or there's no a negative thing that I'm going to project to other people. I'm here for good intentions. I've got a second chance at life. You'll see that in the documentary. And I'm here for a greater cause. And if you want to judge me for a bad person for that, then I suppose I'm never going to win you over. Um, and I just want everybody to win in life. I mean, I think that's uh, really well put. I mean, to be fair, Kaz, I've been, I've been impressed by the way you spoke and the way you come across. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. So, you know, and I hope that in all the podcasts you've done, you've, you've been able to take something from this as well. And mm. It's been really enjoyable, man. Uh, no, honestly, I'm, I'm happy to be here and thank you for having me, bro.